in this big white oak, it's real windy, and I'm next to a standing cornfield. Rattling's been really successful so far. Just no sugars. Bedding behind me, come across here, that's this big standing cornfield. I made some shooting lanes in the physical standing corn. Just short. That one's, they're both about 20, 21 yards and 23 yards to this one. That way if something comes through the corn that doesn't want to commit to come out to the edge, I will have that shot. And these corn rows right here are actually going parallel to this tree line. So if they're walking through that corn and I see a buck on across one lane, then I can get ready and shoot him when he comes through the next. Otherwise, if you're not ready 100% of the time with a bow in your hand, you don't have time to do that. This way, if they go through one and they hit the other one, you got your bow in your hand, you're a full draw. Man, stop him. Take your shot. And I'm in these big, big trees. That's a red oak there, right next to me. And the one I'm in right here is a white oak. This white did have some acorns earlier, but they're pretty much all mopped up by now. You can tell where the deer have been eating down here in these hedgerows. And here's my normal setup. It's my Matthews VXR bow, which I absolutely love. And my backpack. And I'm going to this my quiver. I'd like to tell you I never screw in stuff in public land, but I can't really tell you that. I'm not going to rattle until it gets about half hour to 40 minutes before dark. Mature bucks are much less likely to respond early in the afternoon, unless it's some time during the pre-rut or rut. And right now, it's still early season. You also notice my rattle bag is hanging right here handy. Hanging on my backpack hook. And I also have a watch. I always have face of me, so I can tell what time it is. To explain this scenario a little bit better, bucks are pretty nocturnal by now. It's the 8th of October, so our season's been open eight days. There's about 30 or 40 bow hunters that hunt in this 640 acre section. And this is a big cornfield. So this is a big bedding area. odds of a buck that I want to kill walking by this little 50 yard area on the edge of this cornfield on his own is pretty slim so that's why I rattle the bucks are kind of nocturnal unfortunately I got to be in my tree four hours five hours before dark because does and stuff come by can't come in later because I'd spook them and then you rattle towards dark and hopefully you'll catch them coming out of this corn responding to your rattle sequence. So I hope that explains the whole rattle thing and standing corn better. These bucks are not going to leave the standing corn or they're not going to leave a bedding area like over here on this other side. I'm not going to leave that during daylight hours. Into open areas where they're feeding in short crop fields or under an open timber where there's oaks. They're just not going to do that like you see on TV. So you have to be proactive. I mean, this field here probably has pushing a mile of perimeter. So the odds of them coming by my 50-yard area on their own is really, really slim. Percentages are almost zero. So I have to be proactive in trying to get something to come my direction. And I wait until just before dark because that's when they're more apt to actually get up and move through the corn and come to the location. They're going to come in the corn pretty close to where you're at or they might come and break the edge so you have to have those shots and it's possible they could walk down the edge 
where you've got timber to standing corn. Uh, this works in standing corn and it works in bedding areas. The reason I like doing it in standing corn this time of year because I'm going to hunt the bedding areas during the rut phases and I don't want to spook deer out of the bedding areas with evening entries. I can walk the edge of standing cornfields without messing with the deer in the cornfields. To hunt the interiors of a bedding area to rattle, you have to physically go in it for an evening hunt. In the mornings, you'd be spooking deer out of the interior of the bedding areas with your morning exit. So there's always got to be a plan to everything. This isn't just carte blanche I'm hunting. This is the third standing cornfield I've rattled in four afternoons. Twice I had responses of bucks, decent bucks, but not shooters. Bucks like bedding in the corn because they can stand up and eat, and it's, <laughs> it's awesome security cover. Once corn's down, everything changes. I prefer bags. They're less intrusive. Antlers tend to get in the way all the time, um, especially on DI, DIY hunts because they're big. They're they're cumbersome, and they just or you hang them in the tree, and it's just something else hanging in the tree that's in the way. So bags you can put in a pocket in your backpack and just reach in and grab it when you need it. If you want the sequences to be correct, there's got to be gaps when you're doing sparring sequences. So this is how I start. I'd start with a little bit of a noise, aggressive noise, to try and get their attention from a distance. And the quieter it is, you know, the stiller the night. The other night when I rattled in the eight point, it was dead flat calm. There was no noise whatsoever. So they can hear it from a longer distance. So if you've got a slight wind or if it's raining, you got to be a little bit louder with your initial rattling to get their attention from as far away as possible in the standing cornfield. So this is how I would start. And what you're trying to do is just replicate two bucks, putting their antlers together, and then twist in their heads until they get to where they can push and then they push each other. And when they're pushing each other, they just... You might get that once in a while. And then they'll pull apart and then they'll have to put their heads back together again. But you want these gaps in between. You don't want it solid rattling. That's about it. Do that for about a, you know, 40 seconds to a minute, minute and a half, and then stop. And then about five minutes later, do the exact same thing. And once you've done it twice, let it go. I'm in a different tree. I'm in a burrow next to a standing cornfield. As you can see, my feet are on steps and branches. Kind of step between my feet. Step over there. That's where I rattled that big eight point in the other day that I didn't shoot. I drew on him, but I didn't let it go. See the cornfield edge down through there. A lot of people want to see my setup. It's pretty simple. A backpack, a bow, and a quiver. I'm not a gearhead. And I like the ring of steps because I can move around the tree. I can't do that with a platform. It's all scraped up underneath the tree. Lots of tracks. These burr oaks are dropping acorns. On the backside. We've got a river. There's a bedding area across the river. They can easily cross this river. It barely comes up to their knees. The water's really low right now. So they can come out of the bedding area come into the corn and I'm going to do a rattle sequence probably 40 minutes before dark if I don't see anything prior to that. Killing deer is not about gear. It's about just being very sufficient with as minimal stuff as you have to carry. 
and I carry a lot in that backpack. I have a water bottle, a pee bottle. I have two grunt calls, inhale grunt call, exhale grunt call, rattle bag, hand saw, pelvic saw, extra layer garments, about a half a dozen different flashlights for different needs. I have a bore open cutting knife, range finder, extra release. I'll always take an extra release in case I drop. Even wear an arm guard. Top screw and bolt holders in my pack. If interested, the links to many of the podcasts I've been on or for information about my two-day whitetail workshops that take place in March and April, please visit my website at deer-john.net. Thank you for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and to receive notifications for future videos, please subscribe.